in my mind, I would think that's probably the biggest barrier to people just assuming that they can't do anything. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the biggest barrier for people on the front end, on the, of the at the initial onset. And I and I would agree with it. I think that um, there's a, there's a lot like you need capital to be able to invest, theoretically speaking. And I think that you need to go through the process to understand it. But that's just theoretically. You don't have to have money. The problem is, I think that with having done a project. Um, and learning for yourself and having saved up to earn it and all that, I think that there is a learning curve that goes with that. But once again, it's not necessary. So, I mean, a couple of real key factors that, that I, I think are, are important to note that a lot of people think that money is the challenging part to get, and that's not true. Money is super easy to get. What's really hard to get is a really smoking hot deal. And that's, that's the cold hard truth. If, if I came to you, Henry, and I was like, listen, I've got a, I've got a triplex. I just bought it for 150,000. Do you want to partner on it? Would you partner on it? With you? Yes. <laughs> but, but I think that, that a big part of what makes a smoking hot deal is, is your acquisition price, right? And yeah. buying good deals or, or buying even a deal that's not necessarily at a, at a great acquisition price, but you can transform that deal into something that's going to be just a dynamite, dynamite property. And that's like, you know, the creative element that goes into these kind of things. But I think that uh, people put a lot of weight into whether or not they have enough savings and they don't put enough weight into the fact that they can add value elsewhere. Like um, wholesaling, for example, wholesaling is in my, like it's, Wholesaling is coming to Canada now. It, it, it was never a really huge thing. It was always allowed. Wholesaling was always being legal, but never kind of was coined. Almost like the Burr term, you know, the, that, that strategy, the Burr strategy. It always existed. People did it all the time, but no one really coined that phrase until maybe like five, six, seven years ago, right? That's when Burr became this like popular, uh, popular strategy. But wholesaling, for example, about a wholesaler, like a good wholesaler is like probably one of the most valuable people that you could ever have as part of like your, your network or your power team. Because they, their sole job is to go look for properties that are substantially under market value. And then you can take those as an investor and then you can pitch those deals to people and show them that there's an opportunity to make a great return on those, on those, on those properties. So wholesaling is one strategy is that it includes, imagine you're a person, for those people who don't know, by the way, I'm just gonna kind of explain a, a quick a scenario. You know, Henry, you own a property and that you're looking to sell it and you don't wanna go through the channels of real estate. You have to sell it in less than 30, uh, real estate in terms of like agency, like listing the property and then waiting all that and then finding a buyer with a closing date, all that kind of stuff. You need somebody, you need to be out of that house in like 20 to 30 days. Your house is falling apart. It's not in great shape. You're kind of worried that people even came in here, they might judge you or they, their safety might be in, in, in question, right? You need this place gone. So what you do is you find somebody who's willing to pay you cash for your property. Now there's a fee for that. And that fee is a discounted rate in terms of what you would buy the property for. And that's completely fine. Now, now let's say I go, I, I come to you, you have this house and I say, okay, Henry, I'm going to buy your house for $250,000. And you say, perfect. I'll take it. I'm, uh, I'm out of here. Then before closing happens, I can go to Bob, who's an investor. And I can say, Hey, Bob, I've got this deal. I'm going to, I'll sell you the rights to this contract for, for $270,000. So I'll, I'll net the 20 grand and, and he'll pay 270 and you'll still get your whole 250. Then everybody's happy. And I, it was almost like it was a broker deal, right? That's what wholesaling effectively is. Um, now is a couple of important notes with wholesaling. You, a wholesaler can't act as a real estate agent. They can't what they, what's called bird dogging, but if, assigning a, an agreement of purchase and sale is totally allowed. For those people who think it's not, there is literally like an OREA form that is called the assignment of agreement of purchase and sale. 
it happens all the time. We just need to learn a little bit more about it. And people often don't think it's, it's like, like there's a possibility to what you mean someone just made 20 grand for passing a piece of paper over to another person. Yeah. Happens all the time. And that's a way that you can literally get into the market with no money, literally $0. And you can make a ton of money.